Well, the Browns and uh, Deshaun Watson have a little bit of a counter offer. Uh, eight games and five million dollars. I don't know if the league will go for it, but at least we'll have an answer if they do. Uh, G. Bush is in, Jeff is in, and we're going to do the next Locked On Browns podcast now. You are Locked On Browns, your daily Cleveland Browns podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. Your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound LGB on the LOB, the Lockdown Browns podcast. Brought to you by the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Appreciate everybody who makes Lockdown Browns their first listen day in, day out, whether it's on your favorite podcast platform. Of course, available on YouTube now. Make sure you subscribe, following the channel. Got those notifications on so you can get hit with the latest content as it rolls through on YouTube. Again, thanks to everybody who's made the switch over there. The growth is coming in waves. Um, I have a feeling it's going to start to pick up just a tick more here. As today, Friday, August 12th, your Cleveland Browns, for the first time since January 9th, 2022, will take the field. Your host, Jeff Lloyd, at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd, your host from the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Of course, 92.3, the fans, the barbershop, Garrett Bush, at G Bush 91. Uh, G Bush is in the building here with us. A little bit on the DL, but hey, you know. Still got work to do, a little bit limited, but Garrett Bush, as always, is ready to go. Uh, we mentioned here, we're going to get to, uh, we're going to introduce a couple of new things here. Obviously, the pregame show, the postgame show has always been a big part of Lockdown Browns over the years. Um, you know, with Garrett here, it's going to be a little bit different this year. We're going to introduce uh, Jeff's three keys, uh, G. Bush's three stars, things to watch here as we get into this episode. But there is some Browns news that we need to get to before we can start uh, previewing a little bit of tonight's action. Uh, first things first, apparently Deshaun Watson's camp has maybe upped, you know, their willingness as far as a suspension amount, maybe willing to take eight games up to a $5 million fine, as hopefully they are trying to, you know, basically work with the NFL, NFL here to get some sort of suspension talk squashed and just let everybody go about their business. We'll see where the NFL plays on that. Deshaun Watson slated to start this evening for the Cleveland Browns in tonight's preseason game. So you know, we'll see how this all shakes out, plays out as the day goes on and see where this leaves us over the weekend here. Another thing, um, and from Mary Kay Cabot, the Browns pondering the possibility of bringing in Jimmy Garoppolo if it's a year-long suspension for <clears throat> um, Deshaun Watson. The thing here, there's a couple of ways to look at this. Have they seen enough of Jacoby Brissett to maybe think that maybe they don't think Jacoby Brissett can handle 17 games for them? Certainly a possibility. One thing Gary also talked about is um, you're one snap away from Josh Dobbs or Josh Rosen quarterbacking this team for the first six, eight, however long it is the time Deshaun Watson is, you know, not here. So that's certainly something, you know, that I'm too comfortable with for a team with legitimate aspirations here in the 2022 season. And this kind of bodes well into what Garrett and I were talking about in our previous episode. The Cleveland Browns need an answer. And this is one of the biggest reasons why. If there was another way they wanted to go at the quarterback position, they need to know if that's you know something, a road they need to go down. Uh, so the, the NFL needs to let the Browns know exactly what the intentions are here as far as Deshaun Watson is concerned so they can get themselves suited and ready to play this 2022 season. So Deshaun upping his suspension amount, he's willing maybe to settle out of eight games, a $5 million fine. It appears the Browns do have legitimate interest in bringing in Jimmy Garoppolo. We'll see if that is tied to a certain amount of a Deshaun Watson suspension time, or if they just feel that this is an upgrade they can have for whatever time Deshaun is out. Garrett, some thoughts here on our latest Browns news. Well, I look at the Deshaun Watson news as something that um, I think um, is a bit of a positive because it is it – is, they are trying to get to some sort of uh, resolution and, and just figure out what we're doing here. Uh, yesterday, uh, the last blog we put up, um, we just said, hey, man, it's time to get this figured out, man. Um, you know, enough of the, the, the charades and all of the, the playing and all the, all the rhetoric. The season's coming around. The first, play, the first game is up. Uh, upon us, Deshaun Watson is scheduled to play in that game, and the NFL is still, you know, deliberating over 
all these notes and, and and it's just at this point you know what it is if you want to go ahead and, and push for the season or push for whatever the case it may be a indefinite suspension do it you don't need Paul C or Mr. Harvey to look over stuff and act like he he's he's deliberating over new material there is no new material there is no new testimony there is you know and, and Sue Robinson already gave you a very in-depth look at why she did what she did at least if you're going to do this go ahead and do it so that the, the players association can file an appeal on the situation as well so Deshaun Watson in his camp is like okay well look, look here y'all mad about the money here we'll do five million dollars let's do eight games and let's keep it pushing because at the end of the day um you know one of the things that we we like in in our, in our country is you have a right to a speedy trial and, and that's even in uh, the, the judicial system they can't postpone your trial for five years this has been going for a year almost two years now the nfl please figure out what you're going to do with this um so we can make the move so the cleveland browns can figure out what they're going to do and that points us to jimmy garoppolo uh jimmy g uh his, his training started to uh you know get a lot of people on the board people are are, are basically saying that jimmy g is going to be a better upgrade than uh, jacoby Brissett. and you know um i is Jimmy G, in my opinion, better than Jacoby? Sure. It's about how much better it is. But I'm even almost done tired to talk about that, too. Um, I, I, almost, I, I almost tell him like this. Listen, if Andrew Barry feels Jimmy G's going to give him the best chance to win, go ahead. Do, do, do you think, my guy? Uh, I, I'll worry about the salary cap and whatever is going to happen with that. I'm sure they got a bunch of Ivy League guys that are around that do nothing but figure out the cap ramifications. Um, how much cap that has, and they understand that Deshaun Watson um, is going to cost a lot of money, fifty million or forty million, whatever the case is next year. So I always tell people, don't try to outthink the guys that are that are making the moves. There's a lot of different things in the salary cap that are not privy to the general public, and the reason they don't do it is because they don't want guys running around here um, playing Clue, <laughs> Monopoly boards, bro. Just just free, they'll figure it out. But also on the other end of the spectrum, if they feel Jacoby Brissett is a guy and Jimmy G is a little too much, too pricey for him, I'll ride with that too. So, so I'm cool with either one. Um, to me, I'm just interested in seeing what they look like on the field tonight. Shoot, now this is what we've been waiting on. For, hey, hey, I can only worry about who is on the field tonight, and there's, there's going to be a lot of guys on the field that's going to be playing. I'm down to watch that, and that's what we'll be looking for. Uh, and I think for everybody Browns related, I think this is the first thing it, it, that comes with tonight is it, you can just shut everything else off as far as everything that's going on with this team. And we get three hours to basically see the players who are going to be the key, uh, you know, as to, you know, the way this season shapes. Uh, very excited. Um, and I'm sure there are going to be plenty of players, Browns wise, who will not take a snap tonight, who do not need to take a snap, may not take a snap the entire preseason. And that's all well and good. Uh, you know, we're going to get in a little bit more here with this. But, you know, with Jimmy Garoppolo, you know, this, you see what Jimmy Garoppolo has done to this point in his career. Is he a perfect quarterback? No, that's kind of why the situation he is in where he is in in San Francisco, where they basically drafted a replacement. And I think having Jimmy Garoppolo around is muddying the waters for Trey Lance for them. Uh, so maybe to move on. The Browns have the cap space. And we've talked, you know, for months about the construction of this roster and how good this roster is. And if, you know, these rumors are true and look, you know, Mary Kay, you know, sometimes she gets fed bad information. I don't think maybe this is the case here on Jimmy Garoppolo. I think it's maybe a testimony of, you know, even if, you know, Jacoby Brissett, they like what they're seeing. Maybe it's a possibility here where, you know, they're hedging their bet, God forbid, because we said one ankle injury away from Josh Jobs or Josh Rosen, which I don't think anybody in that building wants. Or they think, you know, what they know of Jimmy Garoppolo and you know, what they've seen at this point in his NFL career. He brings a little bit more to the table for them uh, as far as being able to help this team. And they owe it to this team to be, you know, regardless. they brought Sean Watson in. But we talked about this. They are talented everywhere else. You have a fantastic edge duo. This secondary looks to be absolutely incredible. Linebackers that look like they can go sideline to sideline and run with anybody in the NFL. An offensive line, that is top shelf. Maybe Garoppolo helps these young receivers in the receiving game as a whole take a flight. We know how good the running backs are. The Browns can't have this just go out and be basically, you know, during 
an incomplete type of year due to the fact that they're not going to have Deshaun Watson. There's too much talent on this team. Everybody's in the prime of their career. The Browns need to, if they truly feel Jimmy Garoppolo gives them a better option than Jacoby Brissett, they need to go out and get this done. There's no question about it. Jeff Lloyd, Garrett Bush, we are now going to get into some things to watch here tonight versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. Your latest Lockdown Browns. Appreciate everybody for being along on the ride with us. If you haven't tried Built Bar Puffs yet, you are depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? There's a new flavor. Are you ready? Delicious, indulgent cookie dough covered in chocolate. That's right. Built has done it again. All of the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it. Plus, it is healthy for you. Cookie dough chunk puffs are only 160 calories, and they have a whopping 15 grams of protein in them. Run to Built.com to snag a box for you and the family. It will be the perfect treat, or you can find a really good hiding place and just hoard them all for yourself. What's great about Built is that all the bars are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. Eat something that tastes good and is good for you. You are going to love the new cookie dough chunk puffs. Whether you need a snack for your workout, a late night treat, or just need to grab a quick bite, Built is the perfect protein bar and they taste better than a candy bar. Ditch the calories, fat, and sugar. Grab yourself a Built Bar. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKEDON15, and get 15% off your order. Again, promo code LOCKEDON15. Welcome back to uh, Locked On Browns Podcast. G. Bush, Jeff Lloyd, it is almost game day. I think it is game day, right? It's game day right now. We, we ready to go, man. Uh, we appreciate everybody getting locked in with us. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you catch all the not- notifications when it come right to your phone. Make sure you continue to make Locked On Browns your first listener of the day. Cannot wait to get into this game tonight against the Jacksonville Jaguars. And before we can do that, we're going to go to Jeff for his keys to victory tonight against the Jaguars. Uh, this is actually funny. Um, something One thing people do not know about me, in addition to a bunch of other things, is I <laughs> am actually almost a full-fledged locksmith. Um, so I can cut keys, so we're going to cut some keys here today. Um, we've talked here about some of the biggest storylines of uh, NFL training camp for the Browns to this point. Um, and you know where are we putting our eyes to tonight? I think one of the absolute biggest things we are looking at tonight for the Browns Oh, we're going to start with the young wide receivers. Donovan Peoples-Jones. It's been a flirtation with Donovan Peoples-Jones as far as a role receiver or a legitimate bona fide number two wide receiver in the NFL. And again, look, if Donovan Peoples-Jones doesn't reach the heights of a full-fledged number two wide receiver, that's okay. He was a sixth-round pick. The fact that he produces to what he's produced to to this point is impressive enough as a number, as a former sixth round pick, but all the tools are there. The athleticism, the ability to make this special play, the Hail Mary against Arizona, the ability to get vertical, toasting uh, defensive backs in Cincinnati for a long one from Baker Mayfield last year in the Browns' uh, first game against Cincinnati Bengals. Then Anthony Schwartz and David Bell. Can we find a way to use Anthony Schwartz's speed and Anthony Schwartz to produce? this? There's the potential for Anthony Schwartz not to be a major difference maker, but to be a difference maker. When you legitimately run 4-2 in the 40, that is game-changing speed. Anthony Schwartz was training for the Olympics two years ago before COVID wiped all of that out. If he can improve his route running, if he can make a difference, even if it isn't a huge difference, every time Anthony Schwartz steps onto that field, he needs to be accounted for by any defense that is out there. David Bell. David Bell. What do we think about David Bell? We think David Bell can kind of give you what you lost when Jarvis Landry was moved on from from the Browns. Is he going to give you those type of numbers that prime Jarvis Landry did? No, but he's a smart receiver. He knows how to work the underneath. He runs routes well. He knows where the chains are. David Bell was an acquisition. It was a draft pick that we all know. Coach DeFancy was extremely excited for. So really, really big for this third-year wide receiver, this second-year wide receiver, and this rookie wide receiver. Otherwise, the Browns may be looking outside of that locker room for another wide receiver to bring in. Nick Harris, here it is. It's time. Nick Harris, you don't normally get a replacement like this. Nick Harris has basically been the starting center for this team, other than games, for two seasons. You know, as we all know, J.C. Treader, as much as everybody loved him, 
very injured. The knee only allowed him to do so much. Nick Harris basically was your center every single day except for game day. He's primed. He's ready. He's been coached up, of course, by the legend Bill Callahan. He's done a ton of work to get his body in shape. And then for me, it's just the rookies in general. Look, nobody rookie-wise except for Cade York is walking into a starting assignment. But when you have a team that feels like they have legitimate aspirations as to what they can do, there's going to be times where your depth has to step up, whether that's a Perrion Winfrey in the defensive tackle room, whether that is a Martin Emerson. Look, and as much as we like the cornerbacks here for the Browns, there's been missed times over the years and times where other guys have had to get legitimate reps. Can Martin Emerson be one of those guys? Of course, David Bell is another guy we mentioned. Um, you know, where is the depth in the edge room going to go? We have our starters in Clowney and obviously Miles Garrett. Chase Winovich looks to be like a nice, very nice situational pass rusher. Alex Wright, Isaiah Thomas, they fit the bill. Six foot four, six foot five, 270. Athletic, long, lean. These guys can get things done. So for the rookies here, this is a big opportunity for them. Yes, your playing time is not going to be a large amount unless something goes wrong. But you're going to need to be ready when your number is called. And for the rookies, these are the guys who are probably going to see a majority of the snaps tonight, Carrot. Yeah, lo love, love, love what you talked about with the with the receivers. Um, I, I think Donovan People Jones goes right into the uh into that mix with those receivers. And with Donovan, Schwartz, it and needs to stop being a summer thing. You know what yep. I'm saying? You know what this is almost yep. like? It's like when you went away, you had that summer camp girlfriend, or you met a girl at the <laughs> beach. That Donovan Peoples Jones now needs to be the fall winter Donovan Peoples Jones. Yeah, you, you need to be. You need to be. A little, you you got to. You got to keep my interest. <laughs> you got to keep my interest the whole school year, right, Jeff? Uh, so it, it's it's Donovan Peoples Jones. Um, I want to see if he if he's out there ready to go. Um, I, I liked what you you said in Nick Harris, and, and a lot of people don't know Nick Harris has been getting a lot of reps behind the scenes. Um, he's one of the guys that Coach Kevin Stefanski really mentioned in terms of a guy that's been living at the facility. He said there's a couple of them. Uh, you, you got uh, Jordan Elliott, who he said lived at the facility. Uh, you got, uh, you, you know, Jack Conklin lived at the facility because of the injury. The third guy that was there that was on a, on a, on a bona fide plan with the strength and conditioning, uh, gained up to 20 pounds, um, worked on his his game, was Nick Harris. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him. If the Cleveland Browns are going to be a dominant offensive line, I'm looking at that guy. Um, and, and the three guys on the outside, can, can Jack Conklin stay healthy? Can Nick Harris step up and take that uh, take that role from J.C. Treader? And, and can Jedrick Will, uh, Wills really, really solidify himself um, in, into a position where the Cleveland Browns don't say they have to go look for another left tackle? He's a guy that uh, that that is going to be the left tackle moving forward in the future. Like all of those, uh, and, and then uh, definitely when we go to the uh, secondary, Secondary is huge. I want to see what Greedy Williams is going to do today. Uh, I already know what Newsom is about. I want to see him continue to take that next step. And I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Grant Delpit, Emerson, uh, and, and A.J. Green to see if, if I can start stamping this Cleveland Browns secondary as one of the best secondaries in the league. So all those all those are good points. I can't wait for the game tonight. And, and looking forward to seeing, obviously, uh, Deshaun Watson put on the Browns jersey and get some playing time for the first time. You know, obviously, we've had to deal with, you know, a, a lot of other things here, you know, this training camp, as opposed to actually talking about, you know, football, which, again, guys, <laughs> our deepest apologies. I don't want to do it. Garrett don't want to do it. God knows our network doesn't want us to do it. Um, but, you know, it's what the storyline is right now. But this should be about football. So tonight, you know what? Block it all out between the white lines. This is what it's all about. Nothing else. I mean, everything else is just, you know, conjecture and speaking. We know that there's going to be a suspension coming for Deshaun Watson. Just need it to be put into, you know, final ease as far as what that is. But this is still a very, very strong football team. Deshaun Watson has not taken a snap in the NFL for almost two years. Um, also, the fact that, you know, there this team, he's never played for the Browns, obviously. And this team is constructed and built with some fantastic talent, motivated players, guys who play for each other, guys who play for the Cleveland Brown logo and treat the Cleveland Brown logo like it, it is as important as any other logo in all of sports. That's the way they carry themselves. That's the way they carry this franchise on their back and represent this franchise. And it's good to get back of that. I think everybody, it's, it's going to be a nice three hours tonight where we can get some clarity, just get back to what they love. Um, you know, will some fans who have been so upset about the Browns, you know, move of Deshaun Watson come back tonight? 
I, I don't know. And look, for, for them, again, that's their prerogative. But for me, I am just excited about seeing some Cleveland Browns players back on the field today. We are going to get to a new segment here for you know what will be part of the pregame shows going further here for 2022. G's three will be coming here in just one second. As always, appreciate everybody who makes Locked On Browns their first listen every single day. Again, your favorite podcast platform. Make sure you're following or subscribe to the show. Five star ratings, written reviews, uh, YouTube. Over 2,500 followers now. Um, could I mean subscribers could not be more appreciative to everybody. Um, it's certainly been a new avenue for me. You know, working into this. You know, and Garrett coming in here. This was a huge part of making this engine go. Um, we've had a ton of fun with it. We're going to continue to have a fun, uh, a lot of fun with it. And you know, look what we and what we said when this started is. Think nothing ain't going to matter. <laughs> Wait till we actually have football to talk about and come tonight. We will have actual football to talk about. Now, as I had mentioned, we, uh, we're going to flip it up here a little bit as we're beginning uh, another new season here. So um, as I gave you my keys to the game, we are now going to introduce G's three, Garrett Bush's three players. He is most focused on this evening as the Browns travel to Jacksonville to play the Jaguars. Well, this is an easy one, man. And one of the, one of the players, the, the first player I'm looking at, we kind of foreshadowed a little bit, is Deshaun Watson. Um, first game in two years, in two almost two years uh, for Deshaun Watson. Sat out all last year, um, just a, an opportunity for him to get back on the field. And I think it's a good opportunity for the players uh, and his teammates to see who Deshaun Watson is as a player, more than anything, the fans. Um, I think that, you know, the fans for so long, um, you know, have, you know, been told about Deshaun Watson. Um, and, and we've had to defend Deshaun Watson. We've had to come to the aid of Deshaun Watson. And he hasn't even played a game for us. Today is a payoff for all the fans that have been, you know, saying, is this guy worth three extra first round picks? Is this guy worth all the heartache and pain? Is he worth all the, uh, the criticism I'm, I'm getting on Twitter and Facebook and people asking me, how can I support the Cleveland Browns? You got Deshaun Watson. Well, today is a day where you actually get to see what type of ball player he is on the field. Uh, you get to see why the Cleveland Browns went out their way uh, and, and sacrificed so much to bring him in. Um, and I'm just excited to see what he's going to bring to the table. Just something to get his feet wet, something to just, you know, take a look at the skill set. And, 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 and ha this will be the first step possibly into getting things behind him by getting back on the field because that's where players' sanctuary is, it's the field. Um, it's the locker room. Uh, it's not in front of people in front of 30,000 cameras talking about allegations. That's not where most people are most comfortable with. So excited for first and foremost about Deshaun Watson getting an opportunity to play and fans getting an opportunity to, to see him. Second person I'm definitely looking at today. This is, uh, this is going to be one of the, one of those, those guys who to me really needs to, uh, really come to come to play. And that's Jordan Elliott. And the reason I got Jordan Nelly is because Coach Stefanski spot shot him and said his game is totally different. Um, he's gay, he's up to 320 pounds. He, they have him starting today. And for me, if I can find and, and we can get Jordan Elliott to play football and start doing his thing, now I can go back and say, okay, well, now we can get Jordan, we can get uh, 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 Perry on Winfrey up to speed. And, and those two might be the defensive tackles that we needed inside to continue to make this thing uh this defensive line a potent defensive line so i'm looking for jordan elliott against the jacksonville jaguars i'm looking for uh him to be uh, causing disruption in the backfield i'm looking for him to be active i'm also looking for a secondary pass rush so hey you're not you may not get home uh when they're running play action but do you convert to the to the to the pass rush once you figure out that it's not a run I'm looking for all of those type things uh, with, with Jordan Elliott. So he's a guy to me who who the Browns are trying to give you this spot, bro. They're trying to give it to you. Come on in, give me a couple plays, and, and keep that momentum going so that we can help solidify what the Cleveland Browns up for, front is going to be. And, and then the last person, um, I don't know if he'll play. I was going to say Anthony Schwartz, but I don't know how, many, how much he's going to play since the time he's going to be out. So I'm not even going to put that in there. But a guy who I think is going to get some carries tonight and show why Kareem Hunt did get, no, uh, <laughs> did get another contract is Jerome Ford. Jerome Ford tonight is going to get some touches. Um, he has a burst about him. I've been, I've been positive about uh, what I think he could bring to the table since he got here. I think he's a dude that can catch the football, run the football, and run away from people. 
um, behind this offensive line, behind this 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 unit that's a top three unit in the game. I think Jerome Ford is going to fit right in, and you're going to see why he's he's one of those dudes that can really really uh, show you something. And, and I think he's going to be a, a guy that's going to uh, really show himself well tonight and have a pretty good game. Those are my three. My three shining stars, three guys, three playmakers that I'm looking forward to tonight. Um, Jeff, your thoughts? Um, as we've talked a lot with Deshaun Watson, there's a couple things here. Is it, it first off, it's it's shaking off the rust. I mean, it's really, really difficult as a quarterback to be a long, you know, away from physically playing the game for as long as Deshaun Watson has. So that is a big key of why he's even playing in this game to begin with. Um, he's got to get some live reps. It's been a really, really long time. And the other thing when we talk about Deshaun Watson is where is his head at as far as when he physically gets onto the field? I mean, does he have the mental makeup that he can leave all of this behind when he gets between those white lines? Can he just go out, read, react, throw, and play football? That is certainly a big, big question to that. Jordan Elliott, and I think this is pretty much you know, a statement here, basically, in all of the D-tackle room. Garrett is, you know, we tried. Every single free agent, we all tried. Put that guy in. Oh, sign that guy. And they all went off the board and all went to other places. So whether it's a Jordan Elliott, whether it's a Taven Bryant, whether it is a Perry on Winfrey, whether it's a Tommy Togi guy, got to keep guards, centers, off your linebackers if you expect them to produce like they're capable of. Pressure's on. Jordan Elliott, Tommy Togi guy, Taven Bryant, Perry on Winfrey, the opportunity is there. Somebody basically step up and you know grab it, no doubt about it. Jerome Ford, um, definitely it was interesting that the Browns did draft a running back. Oh, yeah. Opportunity is oh. going to be there for Jerome Ford for this summer. Um, it's going to be difficult for Jerome Ford to find carries in the regular season. But it seems to be a player that the Browns are excited about for the future. And again, as I've said many times, um, knowing that this room is going to be changed significantly in 2023, Smart teams make a move one year early as opposed to making one year uh, a move one year late. And thus the opportunity to be there for Jerome Ford this summer. So certainly, you know, G's three here. This is a big, big, big guys to watch here this evening. And I, I just I just seem to be getting more geeked up as it goes, Garrett. Um, definitely excited to just get to see some live ball here this evening. Oh, yeah. Listen, that, that, that's what it is. I, I, I think that's why everybody is so so excited about it. This is you get an opportunity to see guys. Um, you know, block, tackle, do do the things that they do well. And this is a great opportunity um, for the Cleveland Browns to get out here and see some of these guys, man. So that's why I think everybody is really excited today because we're going to get a chance to see um, Deshaun Watson. You're going to get to see new guys. You're going to get to see Nick Harris, uh, Perry on Winfrey. And, and, you know, there's a level of optimism um, at this point in time around every every camp in uh, in football. Everybody believes that, the, it, you know, due to the NFL and the way the NFL goes, somebody goes from worst to first every single year. Some team that was that had Super Bowl exp aspirations um, come out and lose three in a row and, and you're kind of out, out of the out of the mix. So that's the thing. The great thing about football is is the the actual product on the field and guys, um, the people, the players make the field. And, and sometimes, uh, you know, when we get disillusioned with the whole process in the NFL in the front office is because. That's not part of the game. The part of the game that we enjoy, that we love, is that it has to do with the, the X's and O's in between the field. And Roger Goodell and owners don't have nothing to do with that. They sit in the box and watch the game just like we do. That's the best part of football. Um, so, you know, I, I'm glad to be able to get back to that today. Again, very, very excited Browns for the first time since January 9th, 2022, back on the field tonight in Jacksonville against the Jaguars. And I know, you know, a lot of people, you know, preseason doesn't mean anything. I think this team, this team, a win would do well for this team because I think it would certainly let this team know that, hey, we understand the situation with our quarterback and we are going to be without him, I guess for right now, we'll just say indefinitely because we do not know the number, but this team needs to feel good about themselves and know that the way the rest of this roster is constructed is good enough to play with anybody in this league. That's how good this defense is. That's how strong this offensive line is. That's how good this running game is. This team needs a, a feel good day. The Browns need a day where they can probably feel good about themselves. Should get that this evening in Jacksonville. We'll be back, you know, after the game tonight, we are going to pump it out here. Um, I, I I just can't tell you how excited I am. And this is this will be now year six of full Browns coverage for me. Um, you know, it's been a hell of a ride to this point. Uh, I can't thank you all for everybody who's, you know, basically become 
part of this with me now Garrett in here as well uh, on the Locked On Browns podcast. We're just going to continue to crush it for you guys, give you the best possible content we can day in, day out. Garrett Bush, part of the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show on the DL to, till until Monday, but part of it, look, man, these guys got to recharge your batteries, man. That run from September to January will be a long, long run, so everybody's got to mm. make sure they're 100%. Uh, also, 92.3, the fan, the barbershop, uh, Saturday mornings, always other appearances where G. Bush popping up over at the fan. So make sure you're checking all of that out. Make sure you're subscribed to the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Make sure you're following Garrett at G. Bush 91. Me personally, Jeff Lloyd at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd. Show itself, Lockdown Browns, follow back account. DMs are open, questions, ideas, thoughts. Uh, I'm ready to go tonight. Definitely excited tonight for everybody who makes Lockdown Browns their first lesson every day we appreciate you whether it's in podcast form make sure you're following subscribe and of course now on youtube uh make sure you subscribe to the channel channel make sure you have the notifications on so stuff on youtube drops to you immediately all that being said we got a ball game tonight kids it's been seven long months block everything out just sit back and watch your cleveland browns this has been your daily delivery of all things to all pound lgb on the lob let's go browns